So in this video, we're going to talk about some basic file manipulation. Um, in the previous video, we talked about how to print. So now you've learned how to import a file and how to print a file. We're going to learn a little bit more about some of the basic file manipulation. So as we mentioned in the last video, as long as everything is in white, then you have a calibration set for that particular media. Um, they're all based on the various variables that are here. So you want to make sure that everything you select has a white color to it. And that way you have a full calibration set up for that particular printing situation. So down on the bottom left in this icon, we have the ability to open up various different components of being able to do um, manipulation of that image. So let's start with the main tab and we'll work our way across. So the first icon on the bottom left is the orientation. Um, this one is the automatic orientation. And as you move across, you can do portrait landscape. Um, you can uh, use the original orientation or you can flip it one way or another. So here you can go through and, and select the various different options. Generally, the A with a square um, is the best because it does an automatic orientation. So that it does a landscape or portrait based on the best for that particular medium. Um, by clicking on this icon, it will center it on the media. Uh, clicking on this will disable the uh, proportions. So you can scale it in unusual <laughs> proportions, if you will. Um, but we can bring that back to 100 and back to 100. There we go. And let's put it back in the left hand corner. So you can see that the image sticks in that corner. Um, and that's because we have uh, not selected uh, this option here. When you turn that on, it will move it outside of the border of the image, which might be kind of helpful for doing a masking or a particular part of the print that you want to print. Um, but if you have that set up, then it will kind of have a little block set up so that it won't go past those points. Um, this is the symmetry for uh, mirroring. So if you want to set it up uh, to be on the backside of a print or inside or backside, you can use that option. Um, you have different options available for how to view. So let's move across and take a look in the middle here. So this is our uh, the format for the, the table size and you can create custom ones as well. Um, so that can be set up. Um, the template could be created for a number of different scenarios um, in terms of how you want to create that particular setup in terms of orientation. You can create a custom template. This shows you the width, this shows you the percentage, and this shows you the X and Y offset. So if I wanted to move that slightly, um, you could do that. One thing that's unique within Caldera is if you just tab through, you see that it's gray. It hasn't done anything. Caldera requires an enter key in order for it to move to the next window in order to invoke that selection. So if you were to do 90 and tab, it doesn't make a change. But if you do 90 and uh, enter, it will. So keep in mind that the enter key is important for that. And we'll put this back at zero and enter. Okay. Um, is there multiple pages and set for scaling if only at 100? Pretty self-explanatory. Um, the next one is marks. There's a, a lot of options available to make custom marks within your image and how you want those to be uh, set up. I'm not going to go into too much detail because most of them are fairly self-explanatory and more advanced, but this is where you would set up all of your crop marks, bleed, trims, um, grommets, and things like that. Step and repeat can be very useful if you want to have multiple copies of that image. It will just continue to fill the page as far as you want it to go. We can set up a margin. Oh, I did a tab. There we go. So enter. So not right now we're dealing with inches. Um, that can be converted to millimeters and converted to pixels. So keep in mind that there's lots of different ways that you can set that up. Um, if you're doing textile, it has a lot of options for being able to uh, overlap for various different textile setups. Um, so keep in mind that there's lots to be learned about that. And there's also a kind of a deep dive if you want to in this question mark will take you to Caldera Desk and give you a lot more information. Um, cutting, I'm not going to get into that too much, but this is where we enable any cut contours, uh, colors. We'll talk about that a little bit here. So this does global color correction, not doing spot color color correction, which we'll talk about later, but this is doing an overall global correction. So by turning this on, you're invoking the ability to make those changes. And as you can see, the preview changes as we move this across. Okay. If you want to reset, you go back to here. If you want to do RGB corrections, you do that here. You may want to just increase the saturation or decrease it. That's great. 
We have a high resolution preview, which will show you a better detail of what's going on if that's helpful as well. Okay, so we can go back and we can reset that. Some of you may be more comfortable using correction curves. So by clicking this box here and clicking on the little pen icon, we can alter the correction via uh, graph. We can make this a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. So control points 10 for me, that's a little bit too many, um, or you could do free but it really depends on how you want to uh, work with it. I generally work with five um, and we'll bring that into a point where, where we can make little corrections like this. So if you need to bring the shadows out or bring the 100% you know, down or make any changes to specific colors, you can do that within here. Uh, within the numbers, the same kind of thing could be done. You could go in and do a, a 70, uh, my apologies, do 70 and enter. And if I come back in here, come back and take a look sorry and go back to graph you can see that that change has been done so let's reset that let's close that and let's turn that off so remember if this is on or off we'll invoke that uh, correction under white we have the ability to pick up a spot color that has been designated to print white now the naming convention generally it's important to keep it as white not spot white or white spot um, the rip will automatically pick up a spot color with the name white. So if you're using that naming convention out of Illustrator, it works seamlessly with Caldera because it automatically picks up that spot color. Um, it will have rasterized that so that we can have a preview. Um, if we wanna see um, and hide the background image where that white is, you can see just a little bit there on the, on the right side, um, there is some white that's being um, specified as a spot white. You can also turn on auto, which will pick up an auto white. Now, there's a lot of different ways in which you can use uh, the white automatically. There's what they call the method. So you can generate that from CMYK data. So here you can see white is being placed behind anywhere there is some ink, right? Or where there is no ink. So you could do the inverse of that. Um, or you could create a transfer function so that it does a pixel by pixel analysis and it looks at the density of that particular pixel and it will put white in behind it based on the density of that image. So that can be very helpful if you want to do a softer transition behind the light colors and a darker transition behind the uh, darker colors. Um, you know, don't cover the crop marks. Uh, the density generally we leave at 100. And here you have your layering options in terms of how you want to set down the white. Do you want to go spot white first, white, spot white? Um, do you want to do a flood? The larger the number, the denser the white. You have a higher density with a larger drop. Um, and then the last thing is we can do is sort of a linearization curve on the white. Again, that's probably more advanced, so we're not going to get into that at this point. So. Just as a basic overview, we have the ability to take it from a spot color, which is generated from the image. We have the ability to do a channel, which might be used within there, and you could choose a particular channel if there was one. This one doesn't have it. Um, you can do uh, fill a contour, generate from CMYK data, um, and you can invert that the other direction. As we mentioned here, we can do the opposite. So there's lots and lots of options available for setting up white. Um, so we can stop at that and let's close this out. And I think for now that's enough. We'll get into the, another video to talk about um, how to deal with spot color edits on the next video.